want the Holy Spirit. I want the same one who rested on the Christ himself. I want the same one who the apostles were empowered by in the book of Acts. I want the same one who hovered above the face of the deep at the beginning of time when God spoke to the deep and caused all things to come into existence. I want the one who took John to the Isle of Patmos, who gave him visions and revelations of the Christ that were so beautiful they were frightening. I want the same spirit who stirred every prophet to speak and write of the coming of the Messiah. I want the same Holy Spirit who inspired that poetic worship in the heart of David becoming the Psalms. I want the same Holy Spirit who gave wisdom Wisdom to Solomon, who gave favor to Joseph, who gave dreams to the people of Israel. I want the same Holy Spirit who spoke through every prophet, who moved through every apostle. I want the same Holy Spirit that was breathed upon those who are following Christ in John chapter 20, verse 22, when he said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. I want the same Holy Spirit by whom Jesus drove out devils and demons and sent them into pigs and back to the pit of hell. I want the same Holy Ghost who empowered the early church to drive out sickness, to lay down their lives, to spill their blood in the face of persecution and say, you can take my life, but I'm not bowing. I only bow to one and his name is Jesus. I want the same Holy Spirit who gave boldness to Peter. I want the same Holy Spirit who breathed upon the church. I want the same Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12 who gives the gifts that we might help each other. I want the Holy Spirit of God. I don't want another spirit. I don't want a different spirit. We don't need to reinvent him. We don't need to deconstruct our faith. We don't need to try to change things. Truth remains the truth, even if you stop believing it. We need the Holy Ghost. And there are some, there are some, there are preachers who will say, you know, the Holy Spirit did it that way in the book of Acts because it was that way for that time. And then they have their new relevant way of adapting the church and they're adapting to culture and they're bowing to political pressure. You know why they bow to political pressure? Because they don't got the boldness of the Holy Spirit. You know why they change every time culture says you have to change? Because they don't have the spirit of Christ in them. What they have is devils in them. That's why they can't profess the name of Jesus. I'm telling you the truth tonight, church. You know why they can't say the name of Jesus? Because it's not the Holy Spirit in them. No man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. He's the one who gives us the power to pray. Zechariah 12.10 says he's the spirit of supplication. As I was saying, you want that fire on your prayer life? Some of you can remember when you first got saved, it was all you wanted to do. You would lock yourself in your room for hours asking him to touch you. You would lock yourself in the room for hours asking God to breathe upon you. You would ask him to speak to you through the word. You would ask him for dreams and for visions and for encounters. But now because of life and distractions and the many responsibilities that have found their way into your life, you no longer pray like you used to pray. You no longer seek your, his face like you used to seek his face. And the Holy Spirit can take you back to that first love. And he can take you back to that place where you're passionately in love with Jesus. John 14, 26 tells us that he reminds and he reveals. If you're tired of reading chapters and chapters of the Bible only to say, well, what on earth did I just read? If you're tired of reading halfway through and then saying, hmm, I just got distracted, let me start over. If you're tired of reading verse after verse, scripture after scripture, and saying, well, I don't quite know what I was supposed to get out of that, then you need the Holy Spirit because he's the teacher. He authored the word. Every word of God, the scripture declares, was God breathed, meaning it came from his breath, his spirit. Every word is from the Holy Ghost. He's the power unto holiness. Galatians 5.16 tells us that if we walk after the Spirit, we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. The Holy Spirit makes you holy. I call him the holiness spirit. Please hear me on this, church. The Holy Spirit is not a reward for holiness. He's your source for holiness. We imagine that the Holy Spirit will just leave us. Whenever we make a mistake, not so. Tell me, would it make any sense for God to remove from you 
your only power for being holy as a punishment for not being holy. No way. Despite our mistakes and flaws, despite our sins and ungodly thoughts, the Holy Spirit himself faithfully abides in us, a faithful friend. The Holy Spirit is more patient than you are sinful. He's more forgiving than you are broken. And he'll walk with you every step of the way. He's the key to true worship. John 4, 24 says, they that worship will worship in spirit and in truth. That's the word in the spirit. The spirit brings revelation from the word. All true worship is a response to revelation. This is why you can't be forced to worship. You can be forced to sing and to dance and to clap, but you can't be forced to worship. Why? Because worship is a response to what the Holy Spirit reveals about God through the word. And if there's no word in your life, it's not worship. The Holy Spirit is the one who convinces us of our sonship. Romans 8, 15 tells us that it's by the Holy Spirit that we cry out, Abba, Father. Perhaps the greatest work that the Holy Spirit will do in you is cause you to recognize that you belong to God. Amen. He convinces you that you are saved. He reminds you that you belong to God. Whenever you feel disconnected, whenever you feel like you don't belong, whenever you feel like you've gone too far, the Holy Spirit reminds you you're mine. You're not forgotten, you're not abandoned. You're not an orphan. You belong to God. The Holy Spirit gives you boldness. The Holy Spirit gives you faith. The Holy Spirit gives you a love for God. The Holy Spirit is your intercessor. He is your comforter. He is heaven's greatest evangelist, and he's the secret to greater works. He was the power behind Jesus' ministry. Well, don't you know that? Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Do you realize that Jesus healed the sick by the power of the Holy Ghost? Jesus drove out devils by the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's that same power that rests in you and I. Now, I could go on and on and on and on and on and on about who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit does. But until you surrender to him, I mean truly. You know what's scary? Matthew 7. Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Just because you can prophesy doesn't mean you belong to Jesus. Lord, did we not do many mighty works? Lord, Lord, don't you know us? They were shocked, shocked to find that they didn't belong to him. It's spiritual pride that keeps us from advancing. not recognizing that we need him. And there are those who are walking without him and don't even know it, trying to do things on their own. I don't want to build a ministry because if I build it, that means he didn't. I don't want to live my life because if I live it, it means he didn't. God is looking for people 
who are totally surrendered to the Holy Spirit. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.